in aerodynamics, lift-induced drag, induced drag, vortex drag, or sometimes drag due to lift, is an aerodynamic drag force that occurs whenever a moving object redirects the airflow coming at it. This drag force occurs in airplanes due to wings or a lifting body redirecting air to cause lift and also in cars with airfoil wings that redirect air to cause a downforce. With other parameters remaining the same, induced drag increases as the angle of attack increases. Source of induced drag Lift is produced by the changing direction of the flow around a wing. The change of direction results in a change of velocity, which is an acceleration. To change the direction of the flow therefore requires that a force be applied to the fluid. Lift is simply the reaction force of the fluid acting on the wing. When producing lift, air below the wing is generally at a higher pressure than the air pressure above the wing, while air above the wing is generally at a lower than atmospheric pressure. On a wing of finite span, this pressure difference causes air to flow from the lower surface wing root around the wing tip towards the upper surface wing root. This spanwise flow of air combines with cordwise flowing air, causing a change in speed and direction, which twists the airflow and produces vortices along the wing trailing edge. The vortices created are unstable, and they quickly combine to produce wingtip vortices. The resulting vortices change the speed and direction of the airflow behind the trailing edge, deflecting it downwards, and thus inducing downwash behind the wing. Wingtip vortices modify the airflow around a wing. Compared to a wing of infinite span, vortices reduce the effectiveness of the wing to generate lift, thus requiring a higher angle of attack to compensate, which tilts the total aerodynamic force rearwards. The angular deflection is small and has little effect on the lift. However, there is an increase in the drag equal to the product of the lift force and the angle through which it is deflected. Since the deflection is itself a function of the lift, the additional drag is proportional to the square of the lift. The total aerodynamic force is usually thought of as two components, lift and drag. By definition, the component of force parallel to the oncoming flow is called drag, and the component perpendicular to the oncoming flow is called lift. At practical angles of attack the lift greatly exceeds the drag, reducing induced drag. According to the equations below, a wing of infinite aspect ratio and constant airfoil section would seemingly produce no induced drag per unit of surface area. The characteristics of such a wing can be measured on a section of wing spanning the width of a wind tunnel. Since the walls block spanwise flow and create what is effectively two-dimensional flow, however, in reality, there will still be more drag when the angle of attack is high than when it is zero or slightly negative. A rectangular wing produces much more severe wingtip vortices than a tapered or elliptical wing, therefore many modern wings are tapered. However, an elliptical plan form is more efficient as the induced downwash is constant across the whole of the wingspan. Few aircraft have this plan form because of manufacturing complications, the most famous examples being the World War II Spitfire and Thunderbolt. Tapered wings with straight leading and trailing edges can approximate to elliptical lift distribution. Typically, straight wings produce between 5 to 15 percent more induced drag than an elliptical wing. Similarly, a high aspect ratio wing will produce less induced drag than a wing of low aspect ratio because there is less air disturbance at the tip of a longer, thinner wing. Induced drag can therefore be said to be inversely proportional to aspect ratio. The lift distribution may also be modified by the use of washout, a spanwise twist of the wing to reduce the incidence towards the wing tips, and by changing the airfoil section near the wing tips. This allows more lift to be generated at the wing root and less towards the wing tip, which causes a reduction in the strength of the wing tip vortices. Some early aircraft had fins mounted on the tips of the tailplane which served as end plates. More recent aircraft have wingtip mounted winglets to reduce the intensity of wingtip vortices. Wingtip mounted fuel tanks may also provide some benefit by preventing the spanwise flow of air around the wingtip. Calculation of induced drag 
For a planar wing with an elliptical lift distribution, induced drag is often calculated as follows. These equations make the induced drag depend on the square of the lift for a given aspect ratio and surface area. But as the accompanying graph shows, this is only an approximation and is not valid at high angles of attack. Where and thus hence where, is the aspect ratio, is the induced drag coefficient, is the lift coefficient, is the induced drag, is the wingspan efficiency value by which the induced drag exceeds that of an elliptical lift distribution, typically 0.85 to 0.95, is the lift, is the gross wing area, the product of the wing span and the mean aerodynamic cord. Is the true air speed, is the equivalent air speed, is the air density and is 1.225 kg per cubic meter, the air density at sea level, ISA conditions, combined effect with other drag sources. Induced drag must be added to the parasitic drag to find the total drag. Since induced drag is inversely proportional to the square of the airspeed whereas parasitic drag is proportional to the square of the airspeed, the combined overall drag curve shows a minimum at some airspeed, the minimum drag speed. An aircraft flying at this speed is at its optimal aerodynamic efficiency. According to the above equations, the minimum drag speed occurs at the speed where the induced drag is equal to the parasitic drag. This is the speed at which for unpowered aircraft minimum gradient of descent is achieved. This is also the speed for greatest range. The speed for greatest range is the speed at which a straight line from the origin is tangent to the fuel flow rate curve. The curve of range versus airspeed is normally very flat and it is customary to operate at the speed for 99% best range since this gives about 5%. Greater speed for only 1% less range. The speed for best endurance is the speed for minimum fuel flow rate, and is less than the speed for greatest range. The fuel flow rate is calculated as the product of the power required and the engine specific fuel consumption. The power required is equal to the drag times the speed. Minimum induced drag for generic non-planar systems. The problem is translated in finding the optimal circulation distribution which minimizes the induced drag for a given wingspan and total lift. The concepts of optimal aerodynamic efficiency ratio, augmented Monk's minimum induced drag theorem, minimum induced drag curvature invariance theorem, and quasi-close C wing zero gradient optimal circulation theorem are now discussed. Optimal aerodynamic efficiency ratio The optimal aerodynamic efficiency ratio for a given wing represents the ratio between its aerodynamic efficiency and the corresponding efficiency of a reference classical cantilevered wing with the same wingspan and total lift. Both efficiencies are evaluated under their respective optimal conditions. The optimal aerodynamic efficiency ratio should not be confused with the wingspan efficiency value E. Augmented Monk's minimum induced drag theorem when the lifting system has been translated into a single plane. The induced drag will be minimum when the component of the induced velocity normal to the lifting element at each point is proportional to the cosine of the angle of inclination of the lifting element at that point. The constant of proportionality is the ratio between the free stream velocity and the optimal aerodynamic efficiency. Minimum induced drag curvature invariance theorem changing the sign of the curvature of the lifting line does not modify the optimal induced drag and circulation distribution. The optimal solution is then invariant if the sign of the curvature is modified. Quasi-close C wing zero gradient optimal circulation theorem If the two tips of AC wing are brought indefinitely close to each other, then both the optimal circulation and its first derivative tend to zero at those points. Optimal induced drag minimization procedure and results The optimal conditions are found by solving an integral equation. Several non-planar wings are presented. 